As you all may know, my name is Luke. This is the Outdoor Gear Review. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to this video. Today, I am reviewing the Thermarest Pro Light Apex sleeping pad. Now, I've been testing this out since early summer 2019. We are now into the winter 2020, and after countless nights of use, over 30, it's time to pass on my review. With that being said, let's get to it. With the Apex from Thermarest, this is a self-inflating sleeping pad. Now the question really is, are self-inflating sleeping pads ever truly self-inflating? The answer is no, <laughs> not at all. But with that being said, it does self-inflate somewhat, somewhat. For this episode, I will inflate this via breath because I don't have all day to sit around and wait for this to do its thing. This is available in three sizes, regular, regular wide, and large. The insulation type for these sleeping pads is an open cell foam. The fabric type is a 50D polyester on both sides. The R value is 3.8. The color is the same for all three versions. Thermarest refers to this as heat wave. It is a reddish, pinkish, orangish sort of color, and it features some yellowish colored zigzags as part of the design. Inflating this is no chore at all, as long as you're willing to blow into it. 10 breaths fully inflated this pad, and the foam inside is now expanded. Now, when it comes to the self-inflation aspect, how much time you need really depends on how long it's been stored for. If you store this for a week or longer, the self-inflation time could be an hour, it could be two hours, it could be even longer. And that is a characteristic of just about any sort of self-inflation sleeping pad. Once the foam has self-inflated, you have to then top the pad off via breath to get it to the firmness that you want. For myself, I like to have it very firm, so once the foam has inflated, roughly four breaths will top this off and make it very firm. Let's take a second and jump back to the storage bag and the sleeping pad in its compressed form. With the storage bag, essentially what you are looking at with the medium size or the regular size is 11 inches by 4.8 inches. With the storage bag, the compression bag, you do have compression straps. You have a draw pull here at the top. And this does offer you plenty of space to get the sleeping pad inside of the bag itself. You do not have to worry about there not being enough room like with some sleeping pads. Let's talk about dimensions here for a second. This is the regular size. This is 72 inches long, 20 inches at the top. It does narrow taper towards the bottom and it offers you two inches of cushion from the ground. The weight of the regular size is one pound 6.4 ounces and that includes the compression bag. The stuff bag itself weighs 1.5 ounces. Now that we've gone over the stats, let's talk about comfort. That truly is one of the most important aspects when it comes to a sleeping pad. Now, I am pleased to report that this pad is incredibly comfortable. Two inches of cushion off of the ground. You can turn on your side and your hips aren't pushing into the ground, into the dirt, nothing like that. You can basically sleep any way that you need to, that you want to. Now, as I mentioned, I prefer a firm pad, but you may not. You may want something that's a little bit softer. This is what you do. You let the foam inflate or you blow it up, whatever, and then you lay down on it. Grab the nozzle, open it up just a little bit and let out some air. And basically get it to the point where you like it. That is nice and cushy right there and I'm still off of the ground. Now, of course, the size that you need will depend on your size. For myself, I'm not a tall guy and this fits me perfectly. With my feet essentially down at the bottom, laying down, you can see how much space I have above my head. I am 5'4", by the way. Now, if you're a short guy, maybe a short gal, there is a benefit to this. You can take the top of the sleeping pad and fold it over and make a pillow, just like so. To make the pillow nice and comfortable, release a little bit of air and then fold it over. Continuing on with the review and sticking with the pros, this sleeping pad is fairly lightweight. Yes, there are lighter pads out there, but this one is very comfortable. One pound, 6.4 ounces for the sleeping pad and the compression bag, that's not bad by any means. There are definitely heavier insulated sleeping pads out on the market. It does roll up fairly small, essentially as small as a self-inflating pad can. The next pro is important for some people this is a quiet sleeping pad. You can toss and turn on this and it's not going to make a lot of noise. Do keep in mind that I put this on a piece of Tyvek, so Tyvek is noisy, but the pad itself is quiet. 
you can toss, turn, roll around, and it's not going to sound like you're on a bag of chips. The Thermarest X-Therm is famous for being a loud, noisy pad. This one here, it's not. Next, we have to talk about the ease of use, and that means setting it up and breaking it down. The setup process is very easy. It can be a pain in the butt to wait for it to self-inflate, but if you're willing to blow in it and the conditions are favorable for that, Knock yourself out, you can do it in about 10 breaths. Here's a pro tip for you all. As soon as you get to camp and you begin setting up, undo the nozzle and let this thing begin inflating. And don't even think about it until it's time to go to bed because it can take hours and hours to fully inflate. Last night, I let this thing self-inflate after being rolled up for roughly two weeks. And at roughly two hours, it was almost fully inflated as much as it can inflate on its own. The breakdown process does take a little bit more work. You do have to muscle it somewhat. It's really not that big of a deal. I've heard some people complain about rolling up self-inflating sleeping pads and it being difficult, and it really isn't any different than an air mattress or anything else. The easiest to use sleeping pads are those which are like yoga mats. You can unfold them or unroll them. That's the easiest, but this isn't difficult by any means. Next, we have to talk about the temperature range for this sleeping pad, and you can essentially use this in any sort of conditions, except for those which are very, very hot. For those warmer nights in warmer locations, I want a sleeping pad that is non-insulated. I have used this over 30 nights, ranging from hot conditions to cold ones, from 75 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're going to use this in extremely cold conditions, use an additional sleeping pad with it to give you protection from the ground. What I will do is use a closed cell foam pad, then the Thermarest on top. Stay nice and warm, nice and comfortable. The next and final pro for this sleeping pad is that it is made in the United States. The price is a little bit high, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you're talking about a product made right here in the US. So yes, there is some justification for the price. Now with that being said, let's move on to the cons, starting with weight. This is not the lightest sleeping pad out on the market, but if you're looking for something that's ultra light, go with an air mattress not a self-inflation sleeping pad. Next, we have to talk about price. These range from $120 for the regular and up, I believe to $140 for the large size. That is expensive for a sleeping pad. Now, of course, for that price, you do get quite a bit, and I will come back to that in just a minute. It should be mentioned that that is the retail price range, right? You can, of course, find this pad for much cheaper at retailers, Amazon, and whatnot. Finding these for around 90 bucks is fairly common. I've already touched upon this con, and it is in regards to self-inflation. There are no self-inflating sleeping pads that are truly 100% self-inflating, and that is true with the Apex. You do have to finish it off uh, with some breath, it takes sometimes bloody forever for it to self-inflate. 99.9% .9 of the time, I just blow it up. Now, in really cold conditions, that is not something that you want to do because you do not want the moisture from your breath to freeze on the inside of your pad because it will make you colder, it will lower the R value. You have to keep this in mind. If you're going to use this sleeping pad in conditions below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, how are you going to inflate this without blowing into it? There are sleeping pad bags that will essentially connect to the nozzle and allow you to inflate the pad. Unfortunately, Thermarest, who makes some of these, did not include it with this pad, and that's a shame considering this is an insulated pad. That leads me to the next complaint. The compression bag does not have a nozzle so you can connect to it and inflate the pad that way. No matter what, you will have to finish this off with a number of puffs, so keep that in mind, folks. The next and final con is that there is no repair kit for this pad, so you need to bring one with you just in case you have a problem. And with all of that being said, I wanna talk about price once more. Yes, this is an expensive sleeping pad. There are much cheaper out on the market, but it's time to come back to this point. There are very few sleeping pad companies out there who have a reputation such as Thermarest. Thermarest has a reputation for making sleeping pads that can last easily 10 years without a single problem. And in fact, I have a ProLite 3 that I bought eight years ago. It's a self-inflating pad and it continues to work wonderfully. It's a fantastic product. It's comfortable, it's a little bit heavy, but yeah, it continues to work with no issues to this day, never a leak, never an issue. So do keep that in mind. You do get what you pay for. 
when it comes to outdoor gear. This is pretty much true universally with any sort of product when it comes to the outdoors. When you are going to rely heavily on something, <laughs> literally in this case, you do want to invest some good money into a good product. You can find cheaper products out there, but do they include a lifetime warranty like Thermarest does? No. If you have an issue, you're pretty much screwed and you have to buy another product. And those are aspects that you need to keep in mind when it comes to purchasing a sleeping pad or any other piece of gear. Well, everyone, that pretty much wraps it up for the Apex review. I've gone over the pros, cons, stats, and all that good stuff. In the end, do I recommend this product? I do. If you're looking for a self-inflating sleeping pad, there are so many different types of sleeping pads out on the market. You really do need to decide which one works best for you. There's no real issues with this pad. Of course, look for the best deal possible. You are getting a product from Thermarest, made in the US, great materials, and their history and track record paints a picture of reliability. It's like with my ProLite 3. It's eight years going on nine years old, and it continues to work flawlessly. Now. An air mattress is a whole lot smaller, can be a whole lot lighter. So what do you need? What do you need? Now down below in the comments, make sure to comment, talk about Thermarest, talk about your experiences. Have you ever had to contact their warranty department and how did that work out? For myself, I have plenty of Thermarest products and I've never had an issue. As many of you know, the Outdoor Gear Review is agenda free. You will not find any affiliate links here with this channel. I don't care if you purchase this product. I am simply passing on my thoughts, my feelings about this product. So with that being said, if you have any questions, make sure to email me. Until next time, everyone, take care, strength and honor. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.